You are listening to From Ring to Veil. I'm Shannon. And I'm Kim. And we are your wedding planning gurus. We take the stress out and put the fun back into wedding planning. The Big Listener Question Show, episode number 185. Take a second, pause, and subscribe to the show if you have not already. And join our Facebook group. You can find it on Facebook as From Ring to Veil Wedding Planning Community. We're having a ton of activity over there, questions being asked, which is why we are doing this show so that you guys who are not part of the group will actually be able to have some of your questions answered too. Are you getting married in the Seattle area? If you are, we have a great wedding planning resource guide for you to check out. You can find it at firmingtovail.com slash RG paperback or firmingtovail.com slash RG Kindle. It has tons of information about vendors in the area that we have vetted for you and we love. And if you use one of the vendors out of the book, please tell them where you found them. It would be great. And also at the back of the book, there is some awesome wedding checklists and timelines and things for you to help you plan like budget sheets and all kinds of information. So check that out. So like we said, we have this wedding planning group. We have lots of wedding planning people. We have vendors in this same group. So you ask a question as a wedding planning person and you will get answers from me, Shannon, from the vendors, from the other planning people who have gone through this, had the same questions and figured things out. Um, But we know some of you are probably asking the same questions, but not getting answers like you should. So we decided that we would take nine of the questions from our group and share them here and talk about them. The first question is, my father will not be at my wedding and I don't have any uncles or grandpas or a father-in-law. Should I walk down the aisle alone? Of course, my answer is yes, you can. (laughs) You're an independent grown woman. Whether this be a second or first wedding, you can walk down there alone. That's right. There were a lot of different answers to this, but it, it came down to two. Yes, you can walk alone. Do it. You you go, girl. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and there's also the thought of, in my mind, it's not necessarily somebody walking down the aisle to give you away because nobody really has to give you away anymore. Right. I mean, like, that's just not how it is anymore. But <laughs> if you're like Shannon or maybe me and you you don't walk in high heels or whatever, <laughs> you might need somebody there to catch you if you stumble or fall or trip. You know, that's <laughs> my thought on that. So you don't even have to have a man to have to walk. It's just somebody there to catch you if you stumble yeah. a little bit, you know, just to help you get down the aisle without plant- face planting. If it was just me and I was marrying my significant other and there was no other family for me. Mm -hmm. I would have my BFF Kim walk me down the aisle. Right. Because, you know, me, I I would have to have somebody walk (laughs) me down the aisle because she knows I trip on air. Right. So she would help hold me up. But anyway. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's my thought on that. So, no, you don't have to have somebody, but it's nice to have somebody (laughs) just to be there to catch you in case. (laughs) You don't want to embarrass yourself. Yeah. (laughs) Because it happens. It does happen. And, you know, it's just a preference thing. Like I said, you're an independent woman. You're grown. You don't need anyone to give you away. So if you feel comfortable walking down the aisle yourself, do it. Exactly. Hmm. There you go. Easy peasy. Mm -hmm. Yes and no. (laughs) (laughs) You know you. You know if you're going to trip. Come on. Like high heels. uh, I just... (laughs) I'll just, you know. It doesn't even have to be high heels for me. True. (laughs) I can I can trip in Converse. So yeah, going upstairs. Yeah, there you go. All right. On to the next question. Has anybody thought of doing a brunch reception? Why or why not? And that was she, you know, she asked it to the group. That's why it's it's in that form. So have you thought of having a brunch reception? Well, here's some ideas for you. Our favorite photographer, Kate, said, yes, I've had a few brides do them. It makes a super early day, so great for the early birds. If you don't want it to be super early, do it around lunchtime because, you know, brunch. Hey, it's from 10 to 2. Right. You can have breakfast and lunch foods, but don't forget the mimosas. (laughs) And another listener said she had one. Started at 1130, just like I said. 
cocktail hour with light snacks. Then she had omelets, breakfast sides, and pastas. And I added salads because you need salads. And don't forget, you know, about beer and wine because people drink during brunch. That's true. I mean, I wouldn't go with like mixed drinks or anything. Maybe if you had mimosas and... Yeah, just mimosas. Champagne, you know. Bloody make Mary. Make a mimosa bar. Yeah. Something like that. But don't get too crazy. Brunchy drinks. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You don't want everybody leaving at two. <laughs> <laughs> Drunk. <laughs> you know. Uh, okay, next question. Uh, this This bride is six hours away from the wedding site, and she was looking for a wedding planner. So how do you do that? How do you look for a wedding planner... When you're six hours away from your wedding venue. Or any hours away. Like True. You're going to have a, dis- a destination wedding. How do you search for vendors? Basically, not just wedding planners, but vendors in general. Mm-hmm. There are, you know, our favorite resource is Facebook and Facebook groups. There are a ton of groups of wedding boards, people getting married in that place. But they also have destination wedding places, too. So I, if, if, if we were you... Get on Facebook, check out these wedding boards, see what names keep coming up as wedding planners. And and I'd even ask for a recommendation. Hey, I am Mm -hmm. destination wedding in wherever you're at, your your wedding site is. Who should I call and get some good recommendations that way? Because you really want recommendations and reviews. Get on their website, check out their reviews, uh, even on the wedding websites. Mm -hmm. I know that you can't. I'm pretty sure that you can't like take off negative reviews on those kind of sites. Right. So it's not all just well, five stars. Yeah, I've heard some of them you can, okay. but hopefully they'll be honest. And But anyway, and even if this person recommends them, if it's another fellow wedding planning couple that recommends this, ask them, how was, how did she do? You know, was she there for you? Was, you know, did she answer all your questions? Did she help you actually plan? And, you know, go with their advice. Also, don't forget, whichever vendor you pick, always do contracts with these vendors. It'll keep you happy and satisfied in the long run in case there's something that happens. You know what recourses to take to get your money back Mm -hmm. or, you know, something like that. So always don't ever hire a vendor without a contract. Well said. Next question, escort cards. If you are doing a buffet, do you really need them? Our lovely friend Ginger said no. Only if you want them to sit at a specific table do you need escort cards. Right. That's that's really all they're for. Well, that's twofold. If you want to tell them where to sit and you need to know what they need to eat, that's what an escort Mm -hmm. card is for. Um, Maybe you just have open seating and you're having a buffet. No need for that. And the second part of her question was how to hand out the favors that she has provided for them. I suggested place them on each place setting on the table so that they can actually pick them up and take them with you. With them. Well, yeah, with them. Sorry. But delegate somebody else to do this. Don't you dare do that the day of your wedding. You don't have time for one thing. (laughs) You have people there helping you do this. So delegate this task to someone else. You can set them at a table at the exit when people start to leave. The only thing with that, they won't remember that they're there. You can tell them all night long, don't forget to pick up your favor on the way out. But they'll forget. They don't remember. <laughs> yeah. You could delegate somebody to hand them out as people are leaving. That might be yeah. a little better. But uh, again, sometimes people don't even want to take it. And that's why that they're left on the table. So, yeah. Uh, put, I, I like the putting at the at the table, and that way it's right there. You just grab it, put it in their purse, pocket, whatever, mm-hmm. and then head out with that. So we have a listener that was asking about how to include her fiance's drumming, and I kind of included as a musical instrument type thing into their wedding. That's a big part of his life. She wants to include it. How do you do that? Well, we had an episode on music. And movie themed weddings. So there's lots of ideas there. It's episode 176. But, you know, some of those things are using, let's say, let's go with drumming because that's her thing. Drumsticks, you can use those as a lot of different kind of decor things. Um, Drumsticks on the table in in the centerpiece, that kind of a thing. One of the other listeners who answered the question was that you can have a drum solo for your entrance into your reception. Hey. Yeah, that'd be kind of fun. 
tons of drum solos out there that are awesome. There's tons of awesome drummers, mm-hmm. you know, in bands. You could even have him record one of his own. Yeah. And put it out there. That's so. true. Or you could walk down the aisle to it. That would be kind of fun, too. <laughs> <laughs> Different, you know, hey, a little bit out of the box, which is seems like what this, this wedding is going to be, a little bit more out of the box. So you could do something really fun with it like that. Um, or even as you're walking out recessional, you could do something like that. Um, so my husband plays guitar. He lo- It's a huge part of his life. He's in bands. But he is not fond of just sitting and playing his guitar for a big bunch of people. So I don't know if saying setting up his drums and letting him just get up there and play drums for everybody would be the, the best thing. You have to know who he is and what he likes to do. Maybe that's his favorite thing to do. I don't know. Mm. But I know if I brought my husband's guitar and said, hey, or play your guitar for everybody, he'd be like, <laughs> uh, no. Uh, no, thanks. <laughs> Maybe if the band was there and they all got together and did a couple songs, great. He would. He'd probably love to do that. So you just got to know who he is and what what he wants to do. So when it comes to making them play at the wedding or having them play at the wedding, I should say, uh, Mm -hmm. just think about who he is and what he would actually like. There's a place where you can go and rent not only dresses, but high end designer dresses. Dresses for any occasion, but specifically for your wedding. From the shower to the reception for the bride, bridesmaids and guests. It's called Rent the Runway. It's so easy. You just search for what you want, choose a size, plus you can get a backup size for free. Add another style for just a little extra, then choose how quickly you need it. You can even get it overnighted. And the returns are always free. Go to fromringtovail.com slash runway. That's fromringtovail.com slash R-U-N-W-A-Y to sign up. So the next question is about a wedding day scent. She doesn't know what to choose. She has her favorites, but she wanted something that they can both remember the day with. Mm -hmm. I'm not a big person on scents. Kim is. So (laughs) I'm delegating this question to her. All right. So I'm sure if you've listened to the show, you know that I love essential oils. Um, There are so many, uh, not just great properties, properties of, um, of goodness from these uh, essential oils, but they smell so good. There's a few blends that are pre-made that you could use either, either as a scent. There's one that's called Cheer, and it's it's great for uplifting the mood. And how awesome would that be to wear something that makes everybody happy that smells you? Um, so you could go that route. But there was some other suggestions of going into, you know, smelling together at a couple of different places um, where they they sell scents. And uh, figuring out just together what smells good and what doesn't. Because everybody is very picky on when it comes to scents. I remember even like uh, Scentsy. You know, mm-hmm. you get that basket, you smell that. Like, I love the vanillas. And somebody else is like, oh, that's disgusting. So you, it, it, it's really personal when it comes to scents. So you guys got to yeah. do it together or else it, it might not turn out so good. <laughs> Yeah, I could see I can only have like clean, fresh smelling scents. I can't have anything too flowery or I would be a sneezing, blubbery mess by the end of the day. So (laughs) exactly, you know, it's just I would say also be aware of the people around you. Like, you know, she said, don't overpower it. Yes, absolutely. Don't overpower it because you don't want to walk down the aisle and that's all everybody could do is (laughs) smell your scent. You know, and they're like, yeah. That's all they're going to remember is, wow, that was a lot of perfume. So just be light (laughs) on it. The next question was about plus ones. Who do you give plus ones out to? We've covered this before in another podcast. Well, we've actually talked about it quite a few times, but it keeps coming up. Mm -hmm. The answer I gave her was, if you have a number that you need to stay under, do it. If you then start with like your VIP list, okay? your family, your close friends, you want them to be first on your list. Plus ones, go to married, engaged, and long-term relationship people. So, I mean, if Aunt Sally just got a new boyfriend, Aunt Sally's new boyfriend really doesn't need to come to their wedding because he doesn't know you, for one thing. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have him in the pictures and you're going to say, who's that? (laughs) Later on, you know? So, I mean... Start with your VIP list. It's family, close friends. And if those people have significant others, long-term ones that they're married, engaged, or have long-term relationships, then you add their their plus ones. 
Once you meet your number, cut it off. Okay? You have this number for a reason. You can make a secondary list if you know someone on your first VIP list will not be able to attend. Then you can add people from your secondary list. That's right. Okay. And, you know, people also ask about your bridal party. Should you give plus ones to all of them? So there's a couple of different thoughts on this. Um, Some people say, yes, every single one of them should be able to bring somebody to be with, to dance with. But again, if you're working with a number, you kind of have to be selective on uh, who you are offering your plus ones to. It really depends on the number that you have to stay under. Can, Can everybody at the at the head table, if you're if you're having your bridal party sit there, do they, is there enough room for plus ones for all of them? You know, is somebody single and then these people married for years? And, you know, usually the way the head table works is just the bridal party and not their plus ones. Right. So they're going to have to sit on their own, usually. Unless you have a sweetheart table and then you two are in, in one table and then the rest of your bridal party and their plus ones are there. You really kind of have to go through that each one of those those bridal party people and 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 think about okay are are they married are they single are they in a long term relationship are they engaged what's going on with that situation and and decide on if you want to extend that or not even if they don't have a plus one they have an automatic partner in their partner that they walked down the aisle with that's right so. The groomsmen that you walk down the aisle with, you're going to have someone to dance with. And if they're uneven parties, then you'll have someone every other dance to dance with. Or you could just get out there and find a single guy because there's possibly single men. You know, so they won't be by themselves. (laughs) There's always some people out there to dance with. There are. There are. And not everybody dances either. So, (laughs) you know, really, I think the important part to remember about the plus ones is the number of people you need or want to have at your reception. You know, right. how many can your reception site handle? If it can handle 500 people, fine, you know, and you only have 200 guests. Yeah, but can you handle 500 people? I mean, you have a budget to consider and the attendance thing to consider with your venue. So lots to consider. So we can't tell you. you know a specific yes invite everybody or no don't you know just you have to go with your specific situation all right last but not least we have one more question and it's about when to send out save the dates this question gets asked all the time and i've Mm -hmm. noticed this on many 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 boards and there are a lot of different ideas but one main consensus is eight to 12 months ahead of time I right. I kind of feel like as soon as you know the date and the venue, you should let them know. Whether that's 12 months, maybe it's 14 months ahead of time, just so they know something's coming and they can start planning and saving if they need to because they really want to be there. You know what I mean? Right. So 8 to 12 months is a very good um, time to start sending those out. I'd say closer to 12 months if you have that time. <laughs> And your actual invitations usually go out six to eight weeks before the wedding. Just FYI. And the save the date is really just what it is. It's, hey, we're getting married in a year. Mm-hmm. We, we want you to come. Let, let's see if we can make this happen. So here's the date. Put it on your calendar right. and start making some plans. <laughs> right. And you don't have to send them to every single guest. Mm-mm. You send them to your VIP guests. Okay, of course, your close family, your mom and father and stuff like that, they know when you're getting married. So you really don't have to send them to them. But like your distant relatives that you want to attend, your close friends, maybe your college roommates that aren't, you know, or your college friends that aren't really as close as, you know, before. Send them the save the dates. You don't have to send them to every single guest. Because if you just started planning and you send out to say that you don't really have a guest list to choose from, but you know who you definitely want to be at your wedding. Mm-hmm. So send it to those people. Cause then you're, they're going to send a, like you said, an invitation anyway, or they can't make it, you know, at least your VIPs have already been warned. <laughs> right. Warned. We are getting married. <laughs> all right. So that's all the questions we have. And as you can see, we have a great, group of questions uh from our facebook group 
from Ring to Veil Wedding Planning Community. Join us. We only ask you a couple questions. Uh, as long as you answer those, we'll let you in. Unless you're causing any drama, then we're going to kick you right back out. But <laughs> All right. We prefer you to be engaged in the act- active planning, you know, for your wedding. We've had a couple of requests for people who aren't mar- getting married, who aren't planning their weddings. And it just seems a little strange to us mm-hmm. that you'd want to be in a wedding planning group. Yeah, we're trying to keep the, you know, I the, the group to wedding planning people, really. You know, right. our group of people are actually getting married and... It just seems best to keep it that way for now. And if you've, you know, you're in there, you've already had your wedding date, you can stay in. We're not going to kick you out because, you know, you've been through it. You have great advice. Yes. For our newly engaged couples. So stay in the group. We don't want to kick you out. And also we love vendors to be in their group because they have great advice. They've been there, done that, seen all. Make sure that you're not planning to start a wedding business and and trying to uh, join us. We would like you to actually have a business already. Um, just just so you can give out some really good information and uh, and our wedding planning people can ask questions and you can answer confidently with with your knowledge. So thank you again from Ring to Veil Wedding Planning Community. We also have our timelines and checklists on our website. It's a wealth of information for you. It's timelines of the actual wedding day, timelines from 12 months out. There's a six month out timeline in there. There's all kinds of budget sheets for you to help plan. All kinds of use, useful, I almost said useless. <laughs> <laughs> all kinds of useful information to help you plan. It's only $2.99 and it's on our website at fermingtavelle.com slash checklist. And if you're looking for some fun teas or mugs or totes, all kinds of different types of t-shirts, hoodies, sweatshirts, that kind of stuff, you can go to our uh, FRTV swag shop at fromringtovale.com slash T-E-E and check out some of those. We have some bridal stuff, mother of the bride, mother of the groom, and we even have a groom's woman and a man of honor shirt. So check those out. Uh, again, from ringtovale.com slash T-E-E. You can find any of these links, as you guys probably know this by now, on the uh, website at from ringtovale.com slash 185 in the show notes or right there in your listening app, wherever you're listening to this podcast. Which are Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, iHeartRadio, Alexa even has us out there, CastBox, and Google Podcasts. So until next time, no stress, no worries. Keep calm and listen on. Music provided by bensound.com.